Well, we're living in difficult times. Life is short. Amen. I have a friend uh, who just passed away. He is 62 years old, 63. And uh, he's based in Singapore. So rest in peace. Uh, I already sent my condolences to his brother. He died of, I don't know, stroke two years ago. And um, in a wheelchair, but then moved to the Philippines. But that's when everything got worse. I heard uh, he lost all his mobility and just passed away. So he was just planning, uh, based on information I got from other friends, to retire to the Philippines, buy a house. And I just feel so heartbroken because his dreams did not come true. Uh, that's why we, we only live one day at a time. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. So, well, rest in peace. And my friend, my buddy in high school, we, we lived in one neighborhood in the Philippines back in the 70s. My other buddy who just lives uh, the next street uh, was here again. Second time, last year was first. This time I saw him twice. And the second time I made sure I would share elaborate the gospel to him more extensively. And so we met for the second time. I shared the gospel to him. Amen. He is open. And last night when he was at the airport, he texted me. We were texting each other. We were talking about Reynold, my friend who died, our friend who died. He knows him. And he said, uh, Roy said to me when he was at the airport, thanks for spending time with me, bringing me around and enlightening me. Enlightening me. I, I, I shared to him how to believe in the Lord, how to get saved. Uh, we're old. Amen. We're older. We have issues with our bodies. Uh, we, life is short. Amen. Amen. Uh, he has some health issues too, which is, you know, praise God, I don't have that kind of issue. <laughs> Mine is different. Amen. But I can end up in the wheelchair too in 10 years. If I don't take care of my body, it's sciatica, right? Yeah. So I don't know where this this thorn in the flesh will take me. But I, I stopped lifting heavy things already. Okay? Just for the long term. Amen? Amen. Yes. The, you don't want to abuse your body when you have this. You can't lift heavy stuff. Unless it's a life and death. So anyway, yeah, he, I shared the gospel to him. So he is open. Pray for him. Amen? Pray for him that he will come to know Jesus. And pray for our sister, you know, uh, Sister Winnie's mom. So that, that really shocked me. But at the same time, I should not be shocked because it's going to happen. The older we get, the issues will come. It's, you know why? It's part of the Adamic curse. When Adam fell at the garden, death spread to all men. Sin spread to all men, including the curses of illnesses and diseases. But the good news is we can be redeemed. Amen. We can be redeemed. Amen. Jesus died on the cross to redeem us from the sin of Adam, from physical death. Amen. Death is our entrance to heaven. Death is the gateway to eternal life. And we have been redeemed from the crisis, including illnesses and diseases. Yeah, I thank God He healed me of cancer in 2009. I keep telling my friends I got healed of cancer in 2009. Amen. That I could have died back then. But my, fin my job is not yet done. I have to go where the elect is. Because there's an appointed maybe 150 souls. Maybe there's 20 more. I have to find them. Amen? And I cannot die until the last soul is saved. Praise God! Amen! I'm not here for the crowds. I'm for the souls. Remember, my calling is an evangelist. The same as Paul. You're a chosen vessel of mine. 
to bring the gospel to the Gentiles and to kings, to open their eyes, to deliver them from the hand of Satan, from the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Amen. So, I don't know, I hope there's a uh, hundred more souls. That God already knows who they are. Do you know that? Yeah, more than that. Maybe yeah. some are in Calgary. <laughs> some are in uh, the Philippines. Amen. Praise God. I have to go where they are. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. But anyway, praise God. Uh, Sister Gladys, welcome. I believe the Lord brought you here, so open your heart. You know, the book of Acts tells us the Lord opened the heart of Lydia, and she believed. Amen. See, if the Lord opens your heart, you will believe. Yes. Amen. I thank God Brother June started coming here. You could be part of the elect. <laughs> Amen. That's why I couldn't leave this city yet. Because of you. Because of you. Yeah. Amen. Praise yeah. God. Because people get saved when they hear the preaching of the gospel. Then secondly, the Holy Spirit operating in their hearts. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, before I preach, you cannot just choose to get saved any day, any place you want because you're dead. The Bible teaches total depravity. We were born spiritually dead. God must open your eyes. Amen. That's my mission. To open their eyes. Now people can be religious. I always teach this. I listen to a lot of lectures on online. Apologetics, right? Soteriology. Um, about an hour a day. I listen online. Uh, you can. This is the worst I heard. I heard this week. You can. An atheist can understand the Bible. John 3.16 yeah. An atheist can understand the Bible and teach it. But he's not saved. Because God must open his eyes. See, it's, it's one thing to understand the Bible and go to church. A lot of people can recite verses. But it's another thing to know Jesus personally. It's another thing to be born again. Makaiba po yun. Only the born again will enter the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus said, right? You cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you are born again. So if there's a hundred people who is reciting the Bible, having a Bible study, what you need to ask is, how many of you are born again? Okay? I, I know this is not my sermon. It's very easy to know if you are born again. Do you fear God? Do you steal? Do you cheat? Do you commit immorality? Do you lie? Right? Because if you are born again, the Bible says we are a new creation. Amen? We are brand new. You cannot lie. Amen? You cannot fly to the Philippines with $10,000 in your, inside your underwear. <laughs> yeah, if you have the Holy Spirit, you can't do that. Because that's illegal. That's the difference. A religious person can go to church and do that. Amen? Cheating is income tax, not even tithe. No conviction. Amen. That's why we are called for the elect. Those who will get saved. Because I am an evangelist. That's my calling. Amen. Praise God. So today we're going to study. But in the process of serving God, there will be all kinds of troubles. Amen. We already learned this in the Bible. Part 3. How God protects us. Part 3. My first sermon was about Joseph. Remember how God protected Joseph? He was sold by his brothers, right? But God was fulfilling his plan to make him governor of Egypt. And God used the hatred of his brothers. Amen? 
to bring him to Egypt. Because that's the only way he can be, he can end up in Egypt by selling him to slavery. That's all part of the plan. So, and then we learned about Paul, you know, how he must be imprisoned for the Philippian church to be born. Remember inside prison, the jailer and his family got saved. And that was the beginning of the Philippian church. Amen? Amen. So, you know, I, I always say, you know, even Judas was God's instrument. Because without Judas, they would have a hard time finding Jesus. Hindi mo alam kung nasan si Jesus eh. Amen? Right? Amen. 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 What if they never found Jesus? What if they found Jesus three months after? Because he was like a fugitive. They couldn't find him. Because he was moving from place to place. No, that's... God cannot be late. Amen? So Judas was an important part of God's plan. Amen? So today we're going to, again, how God protects us. Well, again, the story of Paul in Acts 23. There was a murder plot against his life. Amen. You know, when you are an evangelist, Satan will hate you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Satan will hate you if you, you are an evangelist. In Acts chapter 23, I believe Acts 23, there was a murder plot against Paul. Let's begin from verse 11. I'm going to start from verse 11. But the following night, the Lord stood. Acts 23, verse 11. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness at Rome. Amen. Praise God. Let's ask the Lord first. Lord, open our eyes as we read the word. May it lead to salvation of souls in the name of Jesus for your eternal glory. Amen. And when it was day, some of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under an oath, saying they would neither eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. Now, there were more than 40 people, 40 who were, uh, who had formed this conspiracy. They came to the chief priests and elders and said, we have bound ourselves under a great oath that we will not eat anything until we have killed Paul. Now you, therefore, together with the council, suggest to the commander that Paul be brought down to us tomorrow as though you were going to inquire to make further inquiries concerning him and the gospel, but we are ready to kill him before he comes near. Okay, let's stop right there. So this is a conspiracy. Uh, you know, uh, the, the emperor, the Roman emperor Julius Caesar, you know how he was killed? He was killed by his senators during a senate, senate meeting. So each of the conspirators had a dagger, okay, hidden somewhere in their clothing. And the organizer was Brutus. So don't call your kid Brutus. Brutus okay? <laughs> Brutus was the organizer, uh, the mafia ringleader, and they succeeded in killing Julius Caesar, the emperor, inside the Senate meeting. Amen? What a way to die, isn't it? But anyway, this is what they wanted to do with Paul. Forty conspirators... Because Paul had already been arrested, right? Uh, 
a Roman commander res already rescued Paul because he was being beaten by the crowds. So to, to save his life, they, they took Paul to the barracks, right, for protection. And at night, the, the angel said in verse 11, do not be discouraged, be of good cheer. As you have preached in Jerusalem, you must also preach in Rome. Okay? This is God's itinerary for Paul. This is his fourth missionary journey, Rome. He was already on the way to Rome. Amen? So that is the plan of God. Amen? But, you know, in Jerusalem, you know, the, the people were not happy that he was just arrested or imprisoned temporarily. They wanted to kill him. So this this this, this murder plot, these conspirators of 40 people made the vow, we were we are not going to eat and drink until we have killed Paul. They're fasting. <laughs> so each of them died of starvation. Okay? Until the last man, they all died of starvation. Because they could not, they failed to kill Paul. Amen? Because Paul was under the supernatural protection of God. So here was the plot. Uh, they, they're going to tell the commander, the Roman soldiers, we just want to ask about the gospel. We just want to have a Bible study with Paul. Christians do this too. Right? We just want to have an audience with the pastor. We just want to have a Bible study. But hey, that's a conspiracy. Uh, you know, okay. pastors get axed, fired from their jobs. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of churches here in America, because the way they're structured, there's a lot of politics, democracy in the churches. So pastors get fired. Amen? But God uses that too. To move on. Yeah. To move you to where He wants you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. God used that. Yeah. Remember God had to use Herod and Pilate for the crucifixion. They were necessary special VIPs. Can you say amen? amen. <laughs> they are VIPs. God's VIPs. Ang important ng tao yan. God's VIPs. Amen? amen. Si Judas, si Hero, si Pilate. <laughs> Napaka important ng mga tao yan. God used them. Pasa na mga tanap din ng Dios. Amen? amen. Yung mga kapatid ni Joseph na nagbenta sa kanya. Yeah. Amen. Kaya kami nangamtang ng lupa niyo. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. First class, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Kung sasama loob, may purpose si Lord. Kung sasama loob niyo. Amen. Praise God. Let's go. That's just a, a small advertisement. Actually, my siblings were talking the other day about my mom's last land. We're not really sure. Baka wala na rin yun. Baka wala na rin yun. Baka nakuha na ng squatter. Or nabenta na pala. Anyway, let's go. Let's go back to the story. Okay. So, but, but God's providence, okay? We know this is a trap. Okay? Uh, they like, they will request Paul to explain the gospel to them, but as soon as he is standing in front of them, they will, these 40 people are armed to death, mm -hmm. armed to the teeth, mm -hmm. they will overpower Paul. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's the plot. That's the murder plan. But anyway, verse 16, when Paul's sister's son heard their ambush, wow, he went and entered the barracks and told Paul, Amen? Ito yung mga divine chuchu. Can you say amen? Spy, spy, divine chuchu. Mga anointed chuchu. Praise God! Hallelujah! God used them, yeah? Marites. Pagandang Marites. Yeah, the good person of Marites. Amen. Anyway, remember Benjamin saved Joseph. 
Right? Yeah. Here, God is using Paul's nephew. Huh? The nephew heard the plot. Huh? I don't believe this is an accident. God put this person, this young boy, there at the right time, at the right place, place to hear the murder plot. Amen. Amen. Into two seven million sukaran. Amen. Anyway. God's divine providence. These things don't happen by chance. These are ordained by God. Mm. Amen? Remember, Satan cannot be in control of your life. Yeah. It is always God who is in control of everything. Amen? If you died because God allowed it, mm -hmm. permitted it, uh, if, you're, if you're alive because God did not, you know, God spared you, Amen? Mm -hmm. Spared your life. So here, the young boy revealed the plot to Paul, and Paul told him, go to the commander. Mm -hmm. Tell the commander everything you heard. Okay, let's read the Bible. Let's read again. So verse 19, so the boy went to the commander, verse 19, then the commander took him by the hand, went aside and asked him privately, what is it that you have to tell me? And he said, the Jews have agreed to ask that you bring Paul down to the council tomorrow. See, this is happening the, day, the night before, the day before. As though they were going to inquire more fully about his message. But do not yield to them, for more than 40 of them lie in wait for him. Men who have bound themselves, they made the vow, a pledge that they will not eat nor drink until they have killed Paul. Now they are ready, waiting for Paul. Verse 22, So the commander let the young man depart and commanded him to tell no one about these things. Amen. Verse 23, And, when, and then the commander, and he called for two centurions, saying, Prepare 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, 200 spearmen, so that's a total of 470 soldiers, to go to Caesarea at the third hour of the night and provide mounts to set Paul on. In other words, like a, a, a cart, a horse-driven cart, right? Uh, provide uh, a wagon driven by horses, right? And transport Paul to Caesarea. Amen. Put Paul in it, guard him, bring him to the governor, to Felix, the governor in Caesarea. And then the commander wrote a letter for the governor explaining why he is transporting, transferring Paul to Caesarea, right? explaining to the governor the murder plot. Amen. Verse 31, Then the soldiers, as they were commanded, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. The next day they left the horsemen to go on with him and return to the barracks. The next day they left the horsemen to go on with him and returned to the barracks. When they came to Caesarea and had delivered the letter to the governor, they also presented Paul to him. And when the governor had read it, he asked what province he was from, and when he understood that he was from Sicilia, he said, I will hear you when your accusers have come. And he commanded him to be kept into Herod's Praetorium. So anyway, let's stop right there. Okay. So let's focus on God's providential care. Okay. You know, when God calls you to ministry, uh, His providential care definitely will be there for you. Amen. Uh, the, the job had 
uh, includes risk, right? Uh, ministry always has risk involved. Amen? For you and your family, right? That's just the way it is. It's a very... It is worse than working at Costco customer service. Right? It's worse. Ministry is 1,000 times worse than working at Walmart customer service. Right? Because you have to make everyone happy. And you have to take all the complaints. Amen? That's the hard job. Amen? Yeah. But that's just the way the pastors are called to do that. So God will grace them for that. Amen? But I thank God. You know, evangelists are a different calling. Amen? Third years was preparation. Amen. Amen? So I'm just entering my, uh, hopefully, my, my uh, prime. <laughs> I'm just about to enter my prime. Amen? So anyway, God protected me from cancer in 2009 because the job's not finished. Let's look at the story. The angel said, you have preached in Jerusalem. Be encouraged because you must be brought to Rome. Mm -hmm. That's what the angel said, right? You must be brought to Rome. Yeah. What was the prophecy? What did God tell Paul in Acts chapter 9? Remember how God saved him on the way to Damascus, Acts chapter 9? God said to him, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. I have chosen you to, to be a witness for my name. And you, you have to take my name, the gospel, to the Gentiles and to kings. To the Gentiles and to kings. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Now, after two missionary journey, this is the beginning of the third. He is now on the way to Rome as a prisoner. See? Christ. But before he, because he made an appeal to Caesar, the emperor, right? You cannot just have an audience with the emperor, right? You can't just stand before the president of United States or the president of the Philippines. You need to be a sensational, controversial feature. Amen! Amen! Amen. Special. Hated by your fellow Jews. Amen! That's the only way you can appear before Caesar. Because these kings will be curious, why do they hate you? Why are you in chains? Each time Paul will have to explain, I am here because of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who died, whom they crucified, who has risen after three days. That's the gospel. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> so, the first on the list of VIPs is the governor of Caesarea, Governor uh, Felix. Felix. Remember, the commander wrote a letter to Governor Felix. A murder plot, 40 people wanted him dead, so I'm sending him to you for his protection with almost 500 soldiers. Wow. VIP. <laughs> Amen. I love to have bodyguards. I won't have a problem with that. 500 people protecting me? Praise God. Amen. No one can touch you. Amen. See, God protected him. See, God used his nephew to reveal the plot. Amen. The divine choo-choo. Amen. <laughs> they don't use that word anymore. That's back in my college days. <coughs> Amen. Yeah, iba na ngayon ang terminology eh. Modern. Nung araw, kasi chuchu yan. Mag-ingat ka na. Modern. Now, there, there is different terms nowadays. Anyway, let's go back. Okay. See, 
<coughs> the first of the VI, the kings. Remember, this is fulfillment of what Jesus said. You must go to the Gentiles and to kings. First is Felix. We're, we're not going to read the whole story. Then after that is Festus, because Festus replaced Felix. So Paul testified to two governors in Caesarea. And also in Caesarea, he, he testified to King Agrippa. Right? Uh, King Agrippa. Then after Agrippa, he was on his way to Rome to Caesar. Amen! See? Here is the wisdom of God. For God to fulfill that prophecy, God, Jesus did not say, I will give you a business class ticket <laughs> plus $10,000 if you just go to Caesar. No. It has to be a person. No. It will be done the hard way. Yeah. As a prisoner of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. At least his transportation is free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. That's a prisoner. May ingit yung hindi makabili ng ticket. Kasi gusto mo eh, hindi makabili ng ticket. Mahal na eh. Libre. Maybe if you volunteer to be a prisoner of the Lord, the Lord may send you there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Free. <laughs> so remember, Paul is, uh, God is bringing Paul to Rome. VIP with soldiers guarding him. Free of charge. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that's the only way. This is the wisdom of God. Paul needed to be arrested. He needed to be falsely accused. Just like his master, Jesus Christ. Like Joseph, how he was sold to Egypt. Right? He, the betrayal was part of the plan. The murder plot was part of the plan. But also part of God's plan was uh, Benjamin, you know, his false nephew. See, God's instruments of protection. Amen? God works in mysterious ways. <clears throat> so, that nephew was critical, amen, to Paul's protection. And God can do that. Amen? God can do that. Can you say amen? Thank you, Lord. Amen. amen. I am amazed by God's wisdom and sovereignty. Amen. All things work together for good. That's what the Bible says. Romans 8.28 All things work together for good. So God can use persecutions to advance the gospel to where He wants it to go. Amen. And when the gospel is not going to where He wants it, God will create conflict. Mm -hmm. Can God create conflict? Of course. Now, this is not the God that you heard from your religion. You know? The God that I'm preaching is the God of the Bible. Yes. This is not the God of Kibuloi, the God of the Catholics, the God of Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, sometimes we have our own imagination of what God is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I call that traditional beliefs about what God is. God will never do this to you. You will never get fired from work. You will never suffer conflicts, problems. God is good. So that's the problem when we're not reading and studying the Bible. You know, that's why I'm into apologetics. I dive into the Word every morning for an hour to two hours. I listen to Matt Slick. I listen to James White. I listen to uh, apologists with doctorate degrees, debates. I learned, I'm beginning to learn the God of the Bible. There's a lot of mystery when it comes to the sovereignty of God. God can ordain that something bad happened without being evil. 
Why? Because his motives are good. Here, I believe God allowed, let's look at the lessons we've learned. God allowed Joseph to be dropped on the wall, dropped on the well, sold as a slave. He, he allowed Paul to be beaten, imprisoned in Philippi, right? Mm -hmm. and then God sent an earthquake to open the doors of the prison. Here, God allowed Paul to be beaten again, so he can be arrested again. God allowed the plot. So he can be, see without this murder plot, Paul would be stuck in Jerusalem. Without this murder plot, he would still be in Jerusalem. Can you say amen? Gusto nyo lang, you know what I hate about fake Christians? I don't spend a lot of time with people who just want blessing. Mm. Not moving around. I want to teach you the Bible. Yes. If you don't want this God, I can't pray for you. And I get tired when people say, come here because somebody's dying. Come here because... You know what I'd like to pray for? You know, people who say, I want to suffer for Christ. Come and pray for me. Right? I want to be like Jesus. I'm suffering, but I want to be like Him. Pray for me. But God will use okay. this to make me like Him. Okay. You know, sometimes uh, a lot of people come, you know, there's a fire, can you put it out? They just want quick fix to their problems. Blessing, only blessing. That's not born again Christianity, that is called religion. Only blessing. Pumunta ka lang sa pare, ganyan ang gusto mo. Bless me. Right? Diba? Ako nga na nagpupunta sa simbahan, nagdadasal eh. Diyos ko po, tulungan niyo po ako. Pagbalikin niyo po kami ng girlfriend ko, nagbreak kami. Blessing lang, gusto. Sama-sama na ng loob ko. Sa San Beda yun. In love. That's not me. Walang repentance. You know what, what God said to me? I'm gonna stop your heart. Kulang pa yan, dadagdagang pa. That's right. And the final blow, I'm gonna stop your heart with a dagger. Tapos. Heart attack. Nag-repent. Heart attack. Praise God! Thank you, Lord. Sabi nila, how bad? Pastor Alvin, how did you get saved? Were you a murderer? Were you, were you a, a drug addict? A drug dealer? Are you uh, a criminal? No, I'm just, I'm, I was just handsome. <laughs> and the Lord gave me a lot of headache, carpets. Girls. And so the Lord used that to draw me. Thank you, Lord. To the cross. Woo. Amen. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> Amen. So, yeah, people, you know, I really believe when people, that's why I, I still pray for them because I have no choice. Mm -hmm. When people say, can you pray for me? Mm -hmm. Some, But this is what I do. You know what I'm going to pray, sister? Na ka. Amen. Amen. Mag repent ka. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't pray for, Lord, ito na ba yung magiging totoong asawa niya? Ang apat na to. Awawa <laughs> <laughs> naman eh. Pabalihin ko na kamay mo. Bigay mo na. <laughs> no, no, no. I pray, save her. Amen. 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 Yeah. Di ba? Oh, I mean, true, I still pray for them. I can't just snub them, you know. But in my I'm just being honest. I don't want to pray something that's not good for you. That's right. Because if I'm a loving parent, I'm not gonna, okay, I'm gonna pray that you will have more drugs. Jesus name. So you'll be happy. No. You're not gonna pray that for your kids, right? You're not gonna give him. Amen. So, yeah, God uses... You know, God uses these things to move us to where He wants us. If He wants to save you, He will use conflict. If He wants the gospel to go 
to the Philippines, to Asia, Africa, God can create conflict. And yet, God is not evil in doing that. Because mm -hmm. God is sovereign. He can use hero, He can use Pilate, He can use these 40 uh, uh, conspirators. Yeah. Uh, yeah, He can use even Satan. <clears throat> Right. Satan. He can use Satan just to accomplish his purposes in your life. Amen. So God has a purpose for trials. Trials, evil is, even Satan is God's instruments to accomplish his purpose. All things work together for good. Romans 8.28. Welcome so here, Paul was not, you know, he considered himself a prisoner of the Lord. Not a prisoner of Rome, not a prisoner of the religious council. He was a prisoner. He called himself a prisoner of the Lord. Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen? Praise God. So what uh, in the end the prophecy was fulfilled. You must be you must stand before kings and princes. You must testify my name to kings. That's why in the Bible there's the book of Rome, right? There's a church, a church was built in Rome, was planted in Rome because Paul went there. <clears throat> Amen? See, so God uses controversy. Paul had to be controversial. Amen? You know, when he was in Macedonia, you know, the, when the jailer got saved, the jail, all the soldiers, the guards knew why Paul was there. <laughs> Yeah. For Jesus Christ, the Messiah. The message was spreading, you know. That's why Paul said in Philippians, everything that happened to me led to the furtherance of the gospel. Amen? Even the opposite is true. Everybody knows about what Kibule did. What's happening? Right? Yeah. Why his Facebook, YouTube was shut down? Because there's child trafficking, human trafficking, there's sex abuse. Right? People talk about these things. Money, Lord, man, money yes. laundering. Right? So, you know, reverse it. You know, God also uses the same principle, you know, except it, this, this is a good message that will spread. A good God, the good news will spread, not bad news. So people, the whole world will talk about what, what happened to Paul. Why, why was he taken to Rome, to Caesar? Then the gospel, you know, becomes the talk of every household. Amen! Good Lord. See the wisdom of God? But God's not going to shield you or protect you from every harm and danger. No, he's going to expose you there. Uh -huh. Amen! But be assured that when, when that happens, God will protect you. You cannot die before your time. Before your time. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You cannot die. So, you know, we're getting old. We're 62. I, you know, because my friend Reynold died, I texted all my, a few of my buddies in the 70s in Paranaque, neighbors, people I know, and told them what happened, and just said, I, I encourage them, let's take good care of our bodies, we're nakakaidan na tayong lahat, you know, uh, stay safe, you know, take care of your body, life is short. And one of them, Roy, he was here, I was able to witness to him, amen, Lord. before he flew last night for Philippines. I took him out again, and he, he knows Reynold, because we live in the same community, in Paranaque. So Roy told me, thanks for taking me out, bringing me places, and enlightening me. Glory to God. Amen. Because he was yeah. curious. He keeps saying to me, Buti ka pa, ang dami mo kalokohan ng araw. Ako bitin eh. Bitin daw siya. Siguro isa lang naging girlfriend niya. Good boy siya. Oh, good boy siya eh. I said, because don't you know the Lord used that to draw me to my salvation? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So he said, 
Yeah, after all the sharing, I, I sense he was open, he was listening, and he said, thanks for enlightening me. Thank you, God. See, I told him about my cancer, how God protected me. So it's all part of my testimony. All things work together for good. So you can tell a story to the world. Amen? Amen. So that's my story. So anyway, I, I said, wow, my friend Reno died. So what about you? Maybe you're next. <laughs> We're ready. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. We always say that. It's true. We never know. Mm -hmm. But even my wife, okay, you need to pray for my sciatica because it's been on for a year now, more than a year. And I haven't seen a doctor yet. But I'm, I have an appointment this month, end of the month, and I will just pursue this, you know, uh, seriously because I want to stay healthy. Amen? That's why I stretch every day and I walk, walk and walk and walk. Amen? And she also has an appointment with her neurologist, so she can have a stroke, that her, that's their, my dad too, that's in the DNA, that's in the family tree. It's true, anything can happen to us, but he, this is what I believe. Uh, just, I believe in divine sovereignty, that you cannot die before your appointed time. Amen. Okay? Amen. You cannot die before your appointed time. Amen? Amen. Uh, my ministry cannot end until the last soul is saved. It's given to you, yeah. That's why when that last soul is saved, it will be a big celebration. Okay? I'm not here to gather 500 people. No. It's in 30 years how many got saved. Amen. Because I'm an evangelist, remember? I'm not a pastor. So how many souls got saved in 35 years? So when the last one is saved, maybe the 200th soul, hopefully, or the 100th soul, that, 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 that deserves a celebration, right? Then after that, I'm done. Because the number that has been appointed to me is done. Mm-hmm. So, in other words, that's my mission to find until the la to find the lost sheep, the elect sheep, until the last one. Because every evangelist has an appointed uh, number of salvations. I really believe that. Amen. Amen. Do you believe God is all knowing, omniscient? Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He knows how much money left is in your account. Yeah. Amen. Five dollars, sir. Alam niya. <laughs> Malapit ka ng mga utang sa Bombay. Alam niya. Filipinas lang yan. See, God knows everything, right? Amen. So, I'm not gonna die. This is still God's protection. I cannot die before my appointed time. Until the last day. See, even my life, not just the souls that will get saved, your last breath. Exact hour. Yeah. God knows the, the exact time, the last minute, the last second of your death. Everything is known. Remember, Isaiah 45, God had declared the end from the beginning. He knows the story. So, what happened to us during COVID is just like, yung parang pelikula ng movie na nakakasarapan na. Di ba? Ayan na yung COVID. Na Ayan na yung bubong. Ayan. Ayan na yung mga kagula. Kasi iniiba niya na yung direction. Eh. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise God. I really believe that with all my heart. Mm -hmm. Because I cannot die with 50 unsaved people that are appointed to me. Mm -hmm. I must find them. Amen? Yes. Yes. Because I will stand yes. before Him. Yes. 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 Right? If God said, you must take my gospel to Paul, bring my gospel to the Gentiles and to kings, Paul will be judged on the basis of that. Yeah. Amen? So yeah, I'm, I'm, but some, not everyone will be saved. That's the heartache. Not everyone will be saved. That's the hard part. Yeah. <coughs> We've seen that in church. Amen? But the second thing is you must take care of your body too. God's protection is you must be responsible too. Okay, God will heal me. 
Pwede tayong kumain ng lichon araw-araw. No. Praise God! Pampa! One inch taba. Sarap nun, butter. Palaman sa tinapay, nyam-nyam-nyam. No. Chewing gum. Not anymore. Chewing fat all day. I guarantee you, in 30 days, you will be gone. Heart attack. Amen! Yeah! Yeah! Mag-iingat kayo sa mga gotohan sa Pilipinas. <laughs> Go to heaven yan! <laughs> Shorter way to heaven. <laughs> yeah, so, second, God will protect you, but we need to be responsible. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's why, you know, why, why I always walk with my wife, because she's a potential stroke candidate, and I'm a potential wheelchair candidate in 10 Jesus years. Name. Amen? So, also, with the, you know, because life is difficult, stressful, uh, it's true. You know, there'll be all kinds of conflicts, right? In life, not just ministry, financial, Philippines, Word. Philippines, 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 <laughs> Philippines, <laughs> Philippines, 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 Mm-hmm. You know, you, we need to refresh our minds too. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Kaya pa nakita nyo na kami nagbibilang ng dahon. Kina sa mga park. <laughs> nagre-reflect. <Nag-re-re-re-re-flash>. Amen. <laughs> Nagtatanggal na sa mga nanob yun. Nagre-reflect. <laughs> 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 you just because you want to live long, amen. You want to talk to yourself, move on, you know. That's just money. That's just nothing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Then uh, forget about your troubles. Relax your mind. Yeah. Amen. Lord. Praise Lord. God. So that's it. Uh, God's gonna protect you, but be responsible. Take care of your body. Amen. Yes. Eat, eat well. Amen. Then you can live, you know. What if I live until 95? <laughs> right? What if I, at age 80, I'm still like Brother Babke? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, I would love to do that. <laughs> Amen. That's Amen. 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 Normal. Amen. Normal. Amen. Then that means... Uh, yeah, I can I can share the gospel more. You know, I can go to more homes. Yes. I can visit you more. Amen. Amen. I can visit more people. Thank Amen. Lord. Yes. Praise God. I can. Uh, there is Zoom. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not 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 only that, but you know. Thank you, Lord. Uh, if, if people are really special to you, you know, you will make a way. Um, you make time. Amen. You will make time. Yeah. There, are, there are people that are part of your life that will be there forever until you die. Yes. Amen. 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 Uh, there will be people there that will be like your family. Mm-hmm. And, and you, it, it will always be worth, even when we're old and all retired, you know, mm-hmm. I think um, it's still worth you know, seeing each other. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. So, Amen. what we're developing in the house church are, are this is an extension of our families. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. This is not just a commercial building. You know, we try to develop genuine relationships here that will last Amen. years and years and years. Amen. 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 And yeah, wherever the Lord takes us, travel is cheap in Canada. <laughs> Just drive. <laughs> Amen. Like I can, I can see my kids, you know, three, four times a year, right? Because travel is cheap in Canada. Mm-hmm. Amen. So God is good. Let us pray that God will take the gospel. We have two homes lined up, uh, Sister Glory and Sister Alona. And let's pray that when we preach the gospel there, those who are listening Amen. will know Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So, why is it, here's my closing, why is it that God commanded the gospel to spread to the world? Because he wants to save your soul. Yeah. Amen. See, 
We get saved when we hear the good news proclaimed. Amen. So today you heard the good news. Amen. I became a Christian because I heard the good news. It, it's not enough to go to church, to have a religion. You must know Christ personally. Amen. Amen. I was raised up 25 years as a dedicated Catholic. I was Corsilista. Amen. You know that what Corsilista is? Uh, my parents were devoted Catholics. I went to San Beda. I was very religious. I carried medal St. Benedict in my pocket in college and I prayed a lot. <coughs> Even counts, sought the priest for counseling. But you know what I found out? That you can be so religious and still be lost. Mm -hmm. And I heard the good news that Jesus died for me. That you must invite him into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. You must have a personal relationship with him. Something that was missing the first 25 years of my life. Mm -hmm. And God used troubles, all things work together. For God used conflicts to bring me to my salvation. Mm -hmm. In 87, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And God said, see the transformation I've done in your life? I want you to do that to 200 people. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. So we don't know where the count is right now. Kung nasa 100 pa lang tayo o nasa 180 na. <laughs> we don't know if it's 200. We don't even know how many of them will get saved. But I pray for my buddy Roy because he said thank you for enlightening me. Amen. But some passed away without hearing the gospel. That breaks my heart because I already know they're in hell. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the message today. Thank you for the preaching again of the gospel. We're living in difficult times. A lot of people are unemployed, suffering inflation, suffering the high cost of living, especially here in BC. Every major city has Thousands, hundreds of homeless people. Some people are, are separated from their families who are in the Philippines. Some are suffering mentally, emotionally. You know, we haven't factored in the broken homes, the infidelities that take place, the bankruptcies. Even death in the family. We have relatives who died, who perished, who had cancer, stroke and they passed away. Life is full of that. Amen, amen. But we also know life on earth is temporary and short. That's why we need to believe in the Lord Jesus because our true home, our true destination, our true family is in heaven. Yes. Amen. God wants to save you today. Amen. Jesus wants to come into your heart. He wants to transform you. He wants to introduce himself and he will save you. He is speaking to you right now. Just say, I believe. I receive you, Jesus, into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I confess, I acknowledge, I am a sinner, I am lost, and I need you. I accept you right now. Save me. Show me your plan, whatever it is. And from now on, I know you will protect me. From, you will not shield me, but you will protect me from every harm and danger that comes my way. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Listeners, believe in the Lord Jesus. Those that are listening in Zoom, Facebook, believe in the Lord Jesus. Be saved. Because life here is short and difficult. Receive the promise of eternal life and paradise in heaven. True joy will only be found in heaven, not here. Yes. Yes. Amen. So we are on a journey. Amen. We are all destined to go to heaven, to meet our Creator, Jesus Christ, one day. Be ready for that. Are you ready to die any day? You can never tell. 
you can never tell. That's why you must be ready. Amen. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We commit the rest of the day. Thank you for the full house today. That you're bringing people here that are hungry and plugging in people online that are hungry for the gospel. We give you all the glory in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. 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 Amen.